Hello, my name is Dr. John Chamberlain. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Essex, and I'm very interested in how people work together in something what's called collective intelligence or crowdsourcing. Now, if I was to show you this image, would you say that you could see a vase or two faces looking at one another? Or perhaps you see something else. Now, if I was to only ask one person that question, who would be right and who would be wrong in comparison to my answer? If I asked 10 people and they gave me different answers in comparison to my answer, who would be right and who would be wrong? And this is what we call an ambiguous interpretation, and it's actually a, a famous illusion called Rubin's Vase. But what we want to do is replace that single opinion with multiple opinions, because if we do that, then we can capture some of the ambiguity of what we're seeing. That was an example of a visual amb ambiguity, but um, we get similar ambiguity within language. So in this straightforward piece of text, we put the bananas with the elephant in the train's boxcar. Dumbo is now ready to leave. You can be reasonably sure that when we say the word Dumbo, we mean the elephant, because we know uh, there's a famous elephant called Dumbo, and that in our minds that triggers the fact that we're talking about an elephant here and not a train or some collective term for bananas. And this is what's called anaphoric co-reference, where Dumbo, in this case, is an anaphor, and the preceding markables or piece of text, which in this case is the elephant, is what we call an antecedent. Now let's take a slightly different example. We put the bananas with the elephant in the train's boxcar. It is now ready to leave. So what do we mean by it? We could mean the train. We could mean the train's boxcar. We could mean the elephant in the train's boxcar. Or some combination of all three of those things. Interestingly, we're reasonably sure it's not the bananas, because the bananas would be plural. So when you have ambiguity, both in, in the visual sense, but also within language, we want to collect lots of opinions in order to collect <clears throat> ideas about ambiguity. But how do you collect that much information? Well, one observation that most people would make about games is how addictive they are. And there are lots of statistics that show you just how, um, how much people want to play these kind of games. So many years ago, um, we actually developed our own game to collect people's opinions about language ambiguity. It's a game called Phrase Detectives, where players annotate linguistic features of the text, and they can also see the opinions of other players and say whether they agree or disagree with them. Through the game, we've had the opportunity to test lots of methods for motivating players and giving prizes and using leaderboards, these kind of things, it, it, as, a, as a piece of research, as well as looking at language ambiguity. So let me just show you some examples of how this works. Now this is Phrase Detectives, um, and I've just gone straight into the gameplay just so I can show you um, an example of what's going on. So here we see an example of Name the Culprit, and in this uh, part of the game, what we're looking at trying to do is to identify this person, Neil. Now, Neil has been mentioned before. He's been mentioned before several times, in fact. Here he's mentioned. And it's also the, uh, the, the word I here also refers to Neil. But what we're looking for is the closest mention of Neil uh, made within this piece of text that we can see. So in this case, it would be Neil. So I'll just click on that. So now the Neil in orange is referring to the Neil that's been indicated in blue. And now I've done that, I click on done and I can move on. Let's look at another example. 
Here we see uh, the opinion of another player. And in this case, they have said that the entity or the phrase, the BBC. So that's referring to, to, the, to the British Broadcasting Corporation. And that has been mentioned before. So if we look back in the text, we can see the BBC has also been mentioned. And that's the closest one in terms of character distance. So I would be happy to agree with that other player. And so we just click on that button there. Let's look at another example. And you can see that actually um, the, the phrases that you're looking for can actually be quite far apart in the text. Often we say that, um, that they can be as many as four sentences away. And here you can see Quatermass and the Pit, which is the name of the program that's being talked about here, has been mentioned before quite a long time ago, but that's where it was mentioned. So again, I would agree with this player. Here we have another example where um, I'm required to put the uh, my opinion in. And interestingly, what's happened is that Quatermass and the Pit has now been broken up and I'm being asked about the entity or the person Quatermass. So even though Quatermass in the Pit was the title of the program, because it's been broken up, Quatermass is actually talking about the person. So here we can have a look through and we can see here that Quatermass is, is mentioned here, but that is in refer reference to a program, not the name of the person. Again, Quatermass is mentioned here, but it's in relation to a program. So it's actually, we go all the way back here to where Professor Quatermass has been mentioned. And that is the Quatermass that is talked about. It's the person, it's the professor um, in Quatermass and the Pit. So you can see sometimes it's not, it's not straightforward to identify what's going on. And this is where ambiguity starts to come into play. Let's have another look at an, an example. Again, we can see that we looked at Quatermass, but now we're also looking at the Pit. And it's not just any old pit, it's the pit that um, Quatermass is associated with. And again, you can see that the player has, uh, previous player has correctly identified that that pit is uh, referring to, to this one. So I would agree with that player. And the final example here just show, again shows you how things can get slightly ambiguous. Here you can see a player has been given the markable, the entity, BBC Television. Now BBC Television refers to, uh, it doesn't refer to the British Broadcasting Corporation, which what, which is what this player has, um, has marked. Br BBC Television, as in 50 years of BBC Television, talks about the programming um, and, the, and the, uh, the, the programs that are made and have been released and have been watched. So it's a much broader um, um, entity and aspect to the BBC than simply the corporation itself. So in this case, I would actually disagree with this player and say that BBC television has not actually been mentioned before in this sense. So that's a very quick introduction to phrase detectives. In later videos, I'll go into a bit more detail about the interesting ambiguity that we find. This uh, phrase detectives is part of the DALI project and there are uh, many excellent researchers working with me um, to develop new games. And we have several other games called Tile Attack, uh, Wamingo and, and others that you may be interested in playing as well as Phrase Detectives. And you can find more information and links to the games at dali.eecs.qmlu.ac.uk or phrasedetectives.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.